This is Quentin Tarantino at his best, and I don't know that he's ever done anything like this before. You can't ask for a better approach to creating a movie. really who's who. We'd all sit around and talk about, you know, who somebody might be because this is a bit of a detective story. All these characters in The Hateful Eight are untrustworthy. And to put those characters in one room and trap them in that one room with a, a blizzard that is almost like a monster in a monster movie that if they did try to leave, it would devour them. Then to add a slice of Americana I make one a black cavalry officer, and then I make another the son of a rebel renegade, and then I make one a confederate general, and then I add a bunch of other nefarious characters in there, and then just kind of basically stew the pot and see where it goes. General Smithers wishes me to inform you. I heard him here, Billy. Inform this old cracker that I was in Baton Rouge also. When you think of Quentin Tarantino, the first actor that I think of is Samuel L. Jackson. Who the hell are you? Name's Major Marcus Warren, former U.S. Cavalry, currently a servant of the court. I really looked forward to working with Sam because he's a bold actor. He's inventive and creative. He just gives you the opportunity to feel that he's right there with you and for you, and you should be there for him. Why'd they have a reward on you? Kurt, he has a great sense of authenticity in everything that he does. There's essentially a real cowboy that lives inside Kurt. She ain't never gonna leave my goddamn side till I personally put her in a Red Rock jail. Now, do you got that? There's no one in the world I would rather be chained to. <laughs> I could say that quite honestly. And we've managed to figure out this great dance, which kind of happened very naturally. I've been chained to Jennifer Jason Lee for three months now. No, 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 no! Yeah, 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 yeah! Yeah, I think it's been one of my great pleasures and to watch her blossom within this character that she's taking full advantage of. Me and one of them fellows is in cahoots. We're just waiting for everybody to go to sleep. That's what we're gonna kill you. In a group of men, she stands out, not just because she's female, but because she is unique in that hatefulness that all the other seven of us have. You know, if you would have told me when I was a little boy watching all of these actors, uh, admiring all of these people that I would have the opportunity in the span of 10 pages to have a conversation with all of them independent of one another, I would have told you you needed to see a doctor. <laughs> so, how you doing, Major? I ain't in the mood, Chris Manning. I watch Walt show Justified. So I've seen him in different guises and doing different things and always been impressed with the way he approaches his work and the, the honesty of it and the rawness of it. Every character surprises you. Damien Bashir is a very inventive actor. He has this tremendous approach and grasp of exactly who Bob the Mexican is. When you're doing a Quentin Tarantino movie, both Michael Madsen and Tim are two guys that I think are iconic in that world. Bruce is awesome, aside from being, you know, as he has always been, tremendously um, interesting to watch because he'll go in any direction at any time. I can't get over the fact that I did a really dramatic scene with Bruce Dern. It's awesome. Okay, here we go. And action! Quentin has become the filmmaker that I always knew that he was going to be. And it's an amazing feeling to see somebody fully reach their stride. Excellent. Check the gate on that. That was cool. <laughs> it is the circus you thought you were getting into when you, when you started into the movie business. He loves the fun of the process so much that it's not just that it's infectious, it's actually that much fun. One, two, three, go! God, terrific! He has this extraordinary ability that I've never seen in any other filmmaker that I've worked with to be both the auteur filmmaker and the audience at the same time. You don't have filmmakers that always want to do that. He's a rare, rare breed. I think he is reminding people that the cinema is a place to be revered. 
if I'm gonna shoot in 65 millimeter and release in 70, um, I'm not gonna get 3,000 theaters to convert to 70, even if they wanted to, which they don't. It, it, it wouldn't be possible. However, we could do a roadshow version of such where we go in a uh, hundred screens uh, filtered throughout America in this special roadshow version. You know, I, I remember going to the Cinerama Dome and watching Lawrence of Arabia and having the intermission. You got up and had a moment to talk about what you had just seen, and the whole thing was an event. Panavision was 100% on board for what we were trying to do. Retrofitting the lenses, making them work for our new cameras, it was really lovely because they actually didn't just look at it as another movie. They looked at it as a legacy movie. It's going to be something that people are going to remember Panavision for. They're going to remember these lenses. They're going to remember this format. It did take a minute to get a little bit used to the width of what this could see. But within that, it's just special. You can see a lot more than you're used to. I think for the actors, it, it, it's like, oh, we're in a movie. We're not in a hard drive. We're in a movie.